So good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I hope you can all hear me all well, very well. Thank you for taking this time to, uh, to come and join us for um, this uh, second of the series of webinars that uh, SBI lasers are producing uh, to try and uh, just inform people about new application areas for use with, with uh, fiber lasers. So uh, my name's Mark Richmond. I'm the uh, product manager for our high power range of, uh, of uh, CW fiber lasers. And uh, I'd just like to quickly run through what we're gonna cover in this webinar so we've all got uh, the view of where we're going with it. So just uh, firstly, just to tell uh, where we're coming from is uh, SBI lasers. Then we'll go for a, an overview of what is laser welding, which might be covering uh, standard ground, but uh, it just sets the background for looking into oscillation welding and uh, the advantages that uh, that can bring to many processing applications. I'd then like to spend a bit of time showing you some of the results that we've got with different metals uh, for oscillation welding. And, uh, and then finally, leading on from that, we'll look at uh, some of the uh, application areas, uh, particularly looking at e-mobility and how having the uh, oscillation welding can really bring some advantages. But first of all, just a very brief view, overview of uh, our company. Um, SBI Lasers is a UK-based manufacturer of fiber lasers. Um, and uh, not only just manufacturing the fiber lasers as we want to look at, but looking at uh, innovative laser solutions based around industrial material processing, uh, marking and micro applications. And uh, just to let you know there that uh, SBI has been around since 1999 um, and uh, over the years has been acquired by a parent company in Germany, that's Trump. And uh, then in 2015, uh, brought on board uh, JK Lasers, which uh, also has a history going back to the uh, late 1970s. So there's a, a lot of uh, history behind, uh, behind SBI Lasers. And uh, what are we about as a company? Well, SBR Lasers are interested in uh, what we can do with our customers to help them produce uh, good solutions uh, and to grow their businesses and our business together. And we do that through uh, our strengths in uh, the research and development across the whole uh, area of fiber laser technology with components, resonators, fibers, uh, looking into the diodes as well that we use for pumping them. For the uh, control of the lasers, we like to have very accurate control. Um, and also looking into areas of materials processing. So we uh, are looking at developing our own applications. We're looking at uh, growing the resource know-how that we have that we can share with our customers. And, uh, and also focusing on some specific uh, projects in, in conjunction with our customers. That's just a brief overview of, um, of SBI. I'll come back just to touch on our products a bit as we get to that stage. But first of all, we just want to look at, at welding, uh, just remind ourselves of what welding is and how lasers fit into that. So as we know, welding is joining of uh, materials, mainly in this case, we're interested in, in metals but it's using some heat source to melt the parts together, to melt the parts and allowing them to, to fuse together as they cool. And uh, there's a number of uh, ways of producing that heat, mechanical, electrical, uh, through plasma or through directed energy. And uh, as for the purposes of this presentation, we want to concentrate on uh, the directed energy part of that, in particular, thinking about laser beams as a way of putting heat into a metal um, to melt it and uh, then allow it to weld together as it, uh, as it cools. As we think about uh, welding, there's a number of different uh, types of manufacturing processes and often they have different types of, uh, of geometry for the laser weld uh, or for any type of weld. Um, and uh, the, the joints in each case are arrowed here with the red arrows. And for some of these types of uh, 
of well joint, then we can imagine that some of the other ways of producing the, the, the heat input are very easy to do. For instance, on a, uh, an overlap joint, you can do a resistance spot well very easily. But once you get to some of the other uh, type Phillips type joints, it's more difficult um, to use other forms in some cases. And uh, But in a lot of cases, the laser allows you to get into these geometries in a way that other sources can't do when you only have access from one side of the part. So just thinking about what might be some of the advantages of laser welding. First of all, uh, we're able to go in with a very accurate and consistent processing. Say compared to a handheld device, we, we usually either got a robot or um, a workstation set up that's going to produce a very consistent weld. The laser weld, as we've uh, said, um, can produce very high strength welds where the, um, the weld is actually stronger than the parent material in some cases. Uh, and it can be very versatile in the types of welding that we can do. We've already said that um, the welds, laser welding can reach uh, places that other welds can't do. Maybe you're trying to weld inside uh, a component somewhere where it's difficult for access. But also uh, you can weld uh, dissimilar metals with uh, different types of laser welding and we'll be uh, thinking about that a bit later on. Because the laser is a very controllable source, we can very accurately determine how much heat we're going to put in to produce the weld. And uh, that's very useful for the quality of the weld's finish, but also in places where you might be sealing up packages that uh, you have to be very careful about uh, overheating what's inside the package while you're sealing it up. Uh, and the laser has good control over the heat input. And uh, finally, with uh, lasers, even um, with some where there's gaps in, around, you can do an autogenous world. So you don't need to have a, a fusion um, filler wire going into the into the weld in a lot of cases. And you think about the difference to that to a to a TIG weld type situation. So a number of advantages come from uh, from laser welding. Um, Particularly then we want to think about why we're focusing today on fiber lasers as the, the right laser tool for many of these uh, applications. What does a fiber laser bring? Well, first of all, um, the fiber lasers are very efficient, uh, usually just greater than 30% efficiency, which uh, gives us much lower infrastructure requirements. Um, if I think back to previous laser welding, when uh, with solid state lasers were about 3% efficient, then the power supplies and the uh, chillers and the, the uh, mains input needed is, is very much reduced in these days for the fiber lasers. And uh, that also gives us an advantage in our uh, energy bills. The uh, lasers are also very much more compact for uh, power for power. And uh, this gives us um, you know, a chance to use our shop floor areas more productively uh, with, the, with the laser taking up less space there or, or even putting the lasers into applications where before you just couldn't uh, have the room to put that power of laser that was needed. Um, for many years, uh, solid state lasers have used fiber optic beam delivery as a flexible way of delivering the laser beam to the workpiece. The uh, fiber laser brings the advantage that uh, that uh, delivery is inherent in the design of the laser and that there aren't any uh, free space coupling optics to get the beam into the fiber. And that can be an advantage for, um, for the uh, robustness of the, uh, of the system, uh, less chance of uh, optical surfaces getting damaged. Um, so that it gives you a very flexible uh, way of, of integrating the laser into the system. And what we've been able to produce with fiber lasers is a, a very uh, good quality beam, very close to the diffraction limited in some cases, uh, but even at the higher powers, the, uh, the fiber size is a very, a very small diameter 
and allow us to have a very accurate positioning and uh, size of the spot for um, doing very fine uh, processing. But what we're thinking about now is how can we tailor that uh, good beam quality for the process? Uh, there's various uh, ways of doing that. We're looking at some where we use a fixed beam and are able to tailor the, the beam quality coming out of a laser to match up to the process that may be required. And today in this uh, seminar, we're going to be thinking about the external ways of using the beam to, uh, to tailor it for the process. The fiber lasers now have a, a wide range of powers for industrial use that they're used from uh, say 100 watts up to 10 kilowatts or, or even beyond. Uh, so the, it's very easy to find a power level that's applicable for the process uh, that's going on. And uh, yes, they're, they're very uh, flexible from that point of view. You're bound to be able to find one that, that's useful in the process you've got. And because of the, uh, a number of these factors, the capital cost of uh, high power fiber lasers has been uh, reducing over the years. We've got a high productivity, very reliable process, high uptime. Um, and as we've looked at before, the operational costs are very low. So they're very uh, efficient and there's a fast return on investment from using a fiber laser uh, for various uh, materials processing applications. And just to, uh, to back that up then for our particular company, we have uh, what we call our Red Power Cube range of uh, CW fiber lasers in uh, various guises. We run these lasers from 100 watts up to 10 kilowatts, either coming in a, in a 19 inch uh, rack mount format or in a floor standing uh, cabinet uh, with air cooled and uh, water cooled designs depending on the power level. And uh, for the SPI lasers, we have a proprietary uh, type of fiber connector, called, we call it the Fiber Q, which uh, is mechanically compatible with uh, some of the industry standard uh, Q type connectors, but uh, is different in that it has an, an integral back reflection protection built into the termination of the of the fiber, so we're able to deal with uh, back reflected light from those high reflective materials like aluminium and copper and uh, deal safely with the reflected energy right at the end of the fiber rather than waiting for it to get uh, somewhere into the laser where we do have some, some backup systems as well. So it's a very flexible range, uh, it's very good control and uh, as we'll see works well even in this uh, oscillation welding applications. So I wanted to, to uh, introduce the idea of the laser uh, beam profile because uh, this is going to be relevant to us later on. So from one uh, fiber laser we might be able to have a range of different beam profiles by fitting different uh, fibers to that, uh, to that laser. Um, we have um, generally uh, a larger fiber has a larger uh, beam parameter product, a BPP value. And uh, generally, as you go to the, the higher BPP values, you get a more uniform flat top profile. Whereas the, 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 the higher quality beams with a lower BPP value tend to have the power more concentrated in the center of the profile. And when we think about that in relation to welding, we can see that uh, in standard type of welding, then the, the beam profile is one parameter that affects the type of weld. And if you look at the picture on the left, we've gone for one of those, let's say, large diameter fibers. We've produced a, a reasonably uniform power density going onto the surface of the workpiece. And we've produced a, a broad but a shallow weld. Uh, in the left-hand picture there. And if we go for a, a much smaller spot, particularly one where the energy is concentrated onto the center of the, of the power, then we get a keyhole weld, we produce a, a, a narrow and deep weld. What is difficult to do with traditional welding is to produce a deep and wide weld. 
which you might want if you're uh, overlap welding and want a reasonably broad weld interface at the over uh, where the two sheets join to give you a high strength weld. And we'll come on to that problem later on. So this is very simply the standard way that uh, welding is done. We use a, a focus head, a welding head, which uh, you generally got a couple of lenses in it, which uh, collimate the beam diverging away from the from the fiber, and then focus it down onto the workpiece. Generally, you've got a fixed head, which is going to give you one spot size on the workpiece, uh, and you've chosen the optics in your head to uh, give you a best compromise uh, spot size for uh, the range of applications you might be doing. Um, you might be able to sometimes use a fixed magnification head just to, sorry, a, a zoom magnification head to give you a range of uh, spot sizes. Um, but the, uh, the downside there is, is cost and, uh, and the weight, which might mean that your uh, speed of the processing has had to slow down. One, one way around this is uh, to use um, a scanning head where you have uh, orthogonal mirrors in the X and Y direction, uh, just shown in that kind of red ring there. Uh, these scan the beam in X and Y. You take the beam out of the laser fiber and you collimate it up, send it onto the mirrors and that scans over the F beta lens and which uh, translates that uh, angular movement into a an X and Y on your workpiece. And the uh, F beta lenses are generally uh, specific lenses designed to give you a reasonably sized flat field so that you can keep the beam in focus over the, the workpiece of, of maybe a few hundred uh, millimeters depending on the, on the application. Uh, and the, the scan controller comes with a scan head which is linked to the, the head to move the mirrors and at the same time provides a trigger out to the laser, turn the laser on at the right uh, pre-programmed position. And uh, a fairly uh, reasonably well-established application for laser welding with scan heads is called remote welding. Uh, generally, the, the heads are sort of a, a meter distance away from the, from the workpiece. This it does give it a fairly good uh, area over which the, the beam can be directed. Uh, generally, we're using that for a spot weld or for short uh, linear welds. Um, and, and one application here is uh, replacing resistant spot welding for the manufacture of car door panels, where all, all the welds around the, around the edge of the door are done with, in a remote weld application. Uh, obviously, in this case, you can't uh, really use a, a shield gas um, because of the distance. Uh, so you've, you've got to live with any plume or spatter that comes out from the process. So that, anyway, that's just a, an application that is using scan heads uh, for a number of years. But now we want to come on to the main part of the, the discussion, which is about oscillation welding and the advantages that that can bring into, uh, into processing. First of all, what do we mean by uh, oscillation welding? So in oscillation welding, we're going to rapidly move the laser beam over the workpiece. We're going to oscillate it in a repetitive pattern, and we're going to linearly translate that pattern over the, over the workpiece surface. Uh, generally, uh, it's done with a scan head, so we can rotate and linearly move at the same time. But there are a range of uh, other heads out using devices which produce the, uh, the, the oscillating pattern uh, within the head and then the workpiece is moved underneath the head or the, he the head's moved linearly by another mechanism uh, over the workpiece. And, and we either do that by dithering the lens or there's a, a, a set of devices called Risley prisms which can be uh, rotated to produce this uh, pattern. Usually, uh, in this case, we use a high quality or a single mode beam with a, a small focus spot size. Um, and uh, the, the little diagram is just showing an oscillation weld and the different uh, parameters that might have been uh, used there, where we're, uh, we'll come back to those in a bit. But 
you can see there's a, there's a circular pattern sort of overlaid there, which, which has produced that well that we can see in the picture underneath it. That's generally what oscillation welding is and why do we want to use oscillation welding? Well, the first thing, uh, first reason what I've got is that we can produce a flexible or tailored uh, weld cross section. By using a combination of the parameters, we can have good control over both the depth and the width of the weld in a way that we can't do with, um, with normal welding applications. Because we can now produce uh, even a wide weld with actually a small focus spot size, we can have, because the small focus spot size gives us a high power density, we can actually use this processing highly reflective materials such as aluminium and copper, which we'll, we'll have a look at in a bit. Again, the control that we've got means that we can very accurately control the heat input and therefore the heat affected zone we get for a process. And generally because of this uh, high power density that we're going in with, we can do a weld with a less uh, heat than we would might otherwise need. Welding gives us a large process window. Uh, this is very useful if you're setting up for a new uh, application or you're in a job shop situation, where it's very easy to, to change the parameters um, you've got a range of the parameters that, that will give you uh, good welding. We can often produce welds in, for instance, copper with uh, very much reduced spatter because we are able to control the heat input into the weld and into the melt pool. Um, and we're now able to independently control the width and the depth of the, uh, of the, of the weld pool and therefore of the finished weld. One thing that we've also found, which is very useful, is that it's very tolerant of, um, of gaps. Uh, we can compensate for poor fit up in, uh, in, in processing. Um, and for those who are familiar with, with welding uh, in standard ways, then this is something which really helps in, uh, in, in coping with parts, which maybe the manufacturing of the parts hasn't been quite as, uh, as good as it could be. So uh, what we're also able to do is um, we can process many materials which are difficult or considered very difficult to weld with the standard processing where we might have a very narrow process window, but now we can use the oscillation welding to give us a reasonably good weld and uh, find it quite easily. So we can do copper, and we'll see some examples of that, a high speed, that we can weld with, with a small focus spot size gives us a, a chance to reduce the weld instabilities. Um, we can do these welds without the need of uh, filler wires, although uh, some, some aluminium grades still benefit from that. And uh, we can overcome a lot of uh, porosity issues in, in welding aluminium because we are able to stabilize the, uh, the keyhole because of the high power density. And by using uh, sort of more tailoring the, the heat input, we're able to look at uh, butt welding to similar metals. So we can uh, put more of the heat on the side of the, of the butt weld, which, uh, where the material needs that. Uh, and we can just do that by, by shifting the center of the, of the oscillating pattern. And again, we can tailor the depth um, through these, uh, even into oscillation and welding of the similar metal. So if I just do a quick summary then, uh, we can see the differences uh, as we look at this table between fixed head welding and, uh, and, and the oscillation welding. Uh, we, we generally uh, going down in, uh, in spot size. We can do the same sort of weld with a lower power range. Um, and we use because we're using the very uh, high quality beams which are able to get the power into a small spot. Um, we saw that uh, previously the weld shape was determined by the beam shape, but now we're going to see that we can have independent control of that. Um, and we don't always need a shield gas now, which, which saves uh, on process costs. And uh, previously there was a way of 
uh, for instance, in aluminium welding, of avoiding the, the hot cracking by using the, the pulse shape of the weld to, to, to cool it down at the tailing edge of the pulse. But now the, uh, the rapidly moving beam is able to control the heat input to the process. So I just wanted to show you uh, an example of that, just a quick aluminium welding, um, something that we've done with um, uh, previously with a YAG laser, pulse YAG laser on the left, and, uh, and then to uh, a, a, admittedly a higher power single mode fiber laser on the right, but we've got uh, a much bigger um, penetration for uh, a, similar, a similar speed. So we've uh, nearly doubled the penetration. Um, and we've got a wider weld, but uh, we can see that the, the, with, the, with the oscillation welding, we can produce even a, a weld profile that's similar to that from a YAG laser if we want to. So when we talk about uh, oscillation welding, there's a number of key parameters that need to be uh, set up, uh, some of which are, are independent, some of which we can, we can uh, uh, link together. So there's the, the, from the laser side, we've, we've got the laser power, we've got the spot size and uh, position. Those come from the, uh, the way we set up our optics. And then we have the decision on whether to use a shield gas or not. Uh, but now we have uh, the oscillation parameters, uh, the width or the diameter of the, uh, of the oscillation, the shape of the oscillation, and there's a little table there shows that the, the standard ones are being used. Uh, and then the frequency at which we, we, we run the oscillations and the amount of overlap between the oscillations. Um, and that uh, is, is sort of governed with the linear speed there. Uh, the frequency, the speed, and the wobble spacing are linked together by the little equation there. So um, there's quite a lot of choice. Um, generally, uh, the circular, uh, pattern is, is the, the first choice uh, and partly this is from practical reasons that if we're welding shapes which aren't always uh, linear, you know, not just trying to weld in a straight line, circular pattern is, is really independent of the direction of travel of the, the linear speed so we can use it um, as we weld round corners or on packages for instance. So some typical ranges for those parameters. Um, we might uh, use something like 0.1 to 1 millimeter for the oscillation width, um, which is going to control our weld width, typically. Uh, we might be running uh, oscillation frequencies, uh, well, let's say 1 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz, maybe uh, sub kilohertz, uh, you know, a few hundred hertz as well sometimes. The oscillation speeds will, will then come out as a few meters per second. Um, and uh, the overlaps may be, uh, you know, 0.3 to 0.5 uh, millimeters. And then we, we are using the linear speed to control the depth of the weld that we've got going there. So the table uh, or the graph is then just showing us uh, what might come out as the, the area that we want to get to in terms of, uh, of where we want to be with our, our welding. So we've got an idea of where to set up the process. I want to show some um, results now from oscillation welding uh, for different uh, materials, starting off with copper. And uh, just to show you here, this was the one done at quite low power, but uh, you can see that uh, just by changing the, uh, the uh, amplitude uh, of, the, uh, of the diameter of the weld, it was very easy to change the, uh, the, the profile. This was one done by um, someone we, we were working with. We also find that uh, despite the, the, the oscillation and motion of the laser, that the weld depth is uh, pretty consistent. And uh, this is a bead on plate weld. I'm sorry, the, the measurements seem to have got a little bit messed up here. But it's a bead on plate measurement, uh, and we're looking at the, the top uh, sort of rough bit of the weld, if you like, um, on the top sort of a third of those two photographs, which were different uh, 10 millimeter sections taken from uh, a long weld, um, where we were welding this uh, two millimeter thick piece of copper, putting a bead on plate there. 
and uh, across the whole length, the, the well depth is about, in this case, was about 0.8 uh, millimeters. These are longitudinal sections, and uh, we got a very consistent depth uh, across the length of the weld. This uh, piece we were trying to show uh, just some tolerance to uh, poor fit up. So remember, this is uh, copper, and uh, we wanted to, uh, which usually is very intolerant to, to, uh, to gaps in the material. Uh, but here we deliberately uh, set two uh, pieces apart with a gap between uh, zero and, uh, and uh, two, uh, about 300 uh, micron. And as we welded across, we welded up to the bit uh, where it got to 280 uh, micron gap, and the weld was still going very well. So we set up a weld about um, uh, you know, 0.45 uh, millimeters um, for the wobble and uh, amplitude, uh, which was giving us obviously a, a 0.9 diameter, and then the weld was just slightly wider than that, at just over one millimeter wide weld. So we're able to, to weld very cleanly, no, no spatter, uh, through, um, through copper, even though there's a deli deliberately introduced gap in it. And uh, just to show you also uh, the, the low spatter effect. So here we're, we're running at not a particularly fast um, linear speed, but um, we're producing a nice one millimeter wide weld with a very uniform uh, cross section, as you can see, uh, almost a sort of a square bottom there, but it's uh, two millimeters deep and 1.6 millimeters wide. Um, we're, this is part of a, a large circle that we were welding uh, on, the, on the surface of the, of the copper. It looks a, a good uh, weld profile, uh, and that comes from running, uh, getting the right uh, recipe for the weld in terms of the overlap and the, the, the linear speed and the frequency of the, uh, of the weld. Um, this is just a bit of a video. It, it says high speed video actually runs slowly, but it's obviously a slowed down picture just so you can uh, see what's happening. You can see the weld pool being dragged around as the beam moves uh, around the oscillation of the, uh, of the weld. Uh, it's actually, you can see here, it's a, a very stable uh, weld pool, um, and that is the reason why we can can make these welds on copper uh, with reasonably high speeds, but with uh, very low spatter. So the weld pool, because of the high power density of the laser, uh, is, is a very stable weld pool. And just starting to look at some uh, dissimilar metals, this is a nut. So the copper and a manganin. Uh, this was uh, done for, uh, for a particular application, but uh, you can see that the copper, uh, red copper strips on the outside and the manganin in the middle, uh, where we've just done uh, joints down each side to, to join the, it together. Um, the welds, top and bottom, you can see they're looking uh, neat. Um, there's a little bit of uh, undercut at the top, but we, we're using no, no fill or anything, remember, on this. On this weld, and just to uh, keep the, the surface bright, we've, we've used an argon assist gas in this uh, situation. So it's uh, butt, butt welding as well as bead on plate and, uh, and, and lap welding are well able to be done with, uh, with these oscillation welding um, situations. So that was copper. The other kind of key material is uh, aluminium. So we want to come on and look at uh, that briefly. So again, we've been uh, concentrating on using a two kilowatt uh, fiber laser for these welds. Uh, here we've uh, welded with a circular pattern. Uh, this is a 1050 grade aluminium. And uh, we've produced uh, with that two kilowatt laser at 75 millimeters a second, uh, a weld that's uh, over two and a half millimeters uh, deep into the, uh, into the aluminium. We went up to uh, to three uh, kilowatt laser. Um, and this time we, we've increased the spot size uh, on the aluminium. We're using a slightly bigger spot size than we did for the copper. 
and that's been found to be advantageous to the type of weld and the, um, um, yeah, the, the quality of the weld that we get. But this is actually a, a, well, a lap weld, uh, two millimeters top and bottom, and you can see we've penetrated uh, over three millimeters and that we've got a good uh, one millimeter weld width at the intersection so that we've got a very strong weld produced here at, uh, at quite a reasonable uh, speed there for that. So it's using a three kilowatt uh, laser. And uh, just uh, to look at uh, what we were able to do here. Um, so the profile, this is, uh, you know, in taking a relatively small uh, change in speed, we've gone from 50 to 75 millimeters uh, second here. We've kept all the other parameters the same for, for these welds uh, with a two kilowatt laser. And uh, as we've been welding around that uh, circular profile, you can see there, um, we did it, uh, we did some cross sections to check uh, what had happened. And the, the weld, as we've increased the, or changed the linear speed, we've got a, a different width to the weld, uh, but also slightly different depth. Uh, and so this is what we were saying about the, by changing the, the parameters, we can control the, the, the profile of the weld uh, without needing to change the laser parameters. Uh, and that gives us another added dimension if we, we want to get into it. And again, uh, in this case, we were only using uh, a kilowatt, but we had uh, two one millimeter thicknesses of um, 52-51 aluminium. Uh, you can see that we've able to produce, uh, again, over a millimeter wide um, at the intersection here. And what's uh, interesting about this uh, type of weld is that um, you've got very good control over the depth so you see we've produced a good uh, weld intersection width but there's no uh, witness through to the back surface of the, the material so because of the, the fact that we've got this added dimension of the oscillation welding compared to a standard welding by controlling the width uh, we can control the width and the depth of the weld so we can produce a, a wide, strong weld deep into the into the material without needing to uh, to let the witness come through onto the back of the material. And uh, just looking at how that might uh, work out in practice, uh, you know, I said at the beginning that one of the things was you you often end up uh, welding up packages where you've got to control the heat because of something inside the package. So this is uh, looking at an oscillation weld doing a hermetic seal around the uh, aluminium package where we've managed to produce uh, welds between different types of aluminium uh, and produce a hermetic uh, seal at a good speed um, and, and giving a good quality. And, and actually, there was a low heat input for this. Sometimes uh, it is, uh, we, we can use a pillow wire, and uh, this. Uh, joint here was done, it made a very strong weld. Uh, we did use a filler wire in, in this application, uh, which was placed on the surface as we, as we welded along just to, uh, just to prove it. Um, uh, but there was the, this is the weld as it came out with no uh, preheating and no post treatment. So it's produced a very uh, good quality weld where the, uh, the filler wire has, has been uh, incorporated into the joint between the two parts. And finally, just a couple of slides about uh, welding stainless steel. Um, yes, we can uh, weld uh, stainless steel. Um, it's, uh, sometimes the, you, the top surface, you do need shield gas to get a good quality to the top surface of stainless steel with oscillation welding. But uh, here we were able to produce a, uh, a good wide weld interface. Again, this is what was required here, but uh, with minimum penetration into the second material uh, to control the heat that went through to the bottom part. But uh, we, we, by setting up the parameters, you can produce a very wide weld interface with uh, very little penetration into the second material. So you get the strength that you need. And again, we've been able to do uh, butt welding 
with um, uh, sorry, stainless steel. And you, you can see just uh, there a little bit of, un uh, of undercut on the top surface, but a good uh, weld. Here we wanted a, a deep weld, not particularly wide weld, but uh, we've managed to produce quite a deep weld through the uh, through the two bits of material that are butted together. Um, slightly brown on the top, that's because there was no shield gas was used in this situation. If we use some argon, uh, we would have got a, a much uh, cleaner looking top bead for the weld. So uh, that's just some results uh, that we've taken from a number of, um, uh, of applications, uh, different materials. I just want to think now about where, where some of the key areas that we might want to use uh, oscillation welding. And uh, there's a number of applications uh, based around e-mobility, uh, which is based for, uh, for electric vehicles and, and other modes of, of transport as well, where we're looking uh, for a number of uh, different uh, applications around the electric vehicle in terms of the, the, the battery packs um, and also in the motors uh, and the power electronics, you can see around there, all, all around the uh, electric vehicle, there's a number of, uh, of applications where laser welding and particularly oscillation welding can bring advantages uh, along the lines that we've been discussing so far. So uh, if I just pick out uh, a few of those in the last a uh, few slides here. Uh, one of the, the application areas there is for the bus bar welding in the battery packs. These are copper and uh, aluminium uh, typically, and uh, one of the areas where it's uh, useful for the, for the oscillation welding is that there are, as we go through the bus bars and the connection to the bus bars, a number of different materials um, and so, or, or the two copper and aluminium be joining together, and that's where the uh, advantages come from having the, um, the oscillation welding to this. So we control as we go into the the, the bus bar welding the the depth of penetration and the width of the weld. And obviously, the bus bars are uh, electrical current uh, carriers, so the uh, resistivity of any joint is important. Um, and so we can make very high conduction welds using the oscillation welding because we are able to uh, control that weld width and, uh, and, and therefore the, the contact area for the current. Uh, another area where uh, laser welding is, uh, is important is in the uh, making of the electric motors. As these go to very high volumes, the production processes need to change. And uh, what they've uh, come to is, is these uh, hairpins that need uh, welding together. Actually, the, another type of laser, the, uh, the pulse lasers that uh, we also make, are often used for cleaning of the uh, insulation and generally cleaning of the, of the hairpins before they're welded. Uh, but then we can use the, the laser welding for joining them together. And they're joined together in, in pairs after they've been fitted into the uh, into the electric motor uh, part. So what we're showing here is uh, there's uh, two kind of rectangular parts of copper, if you, if you think about looking at that top picture, um, which have had an end on welds put together, which has joined together the, the, the two parts. Um, again, this is, uh, is copper, so uh, it's good to make uh, a weld which is very low spatter. Uh, so that they don't get any debris around the rest of the of the motor, uh, and by using the spiral, uh, the oscillation welding, you can produce a very uh, smooth weld pool, which joins the two parts together with a good control of heat input, um, and not uh, letting it go uh, where, where you don't want the heat. So we can produce very good uh, hairpin welding from, from say to part. Another area is. Um, Capacitors, the ultra capacitors. Again, we're looking at here at some dissimilar metal welding that's been able to be done at uh, reasonably high speed with uh, uh, less than the, the full power from the two kilowatt laser here. So 
So we've got uh, welding copper and aluminium together for these uh, uh, high performance capacitors. Uh, the oscillation welding uh, is there. Again, you can see that we've used the circular pattern uh, around, the, around the contactor there. Um, and therefore, the again, this is one of the reasons why the circular uh, oscillation pattern is important because as you weld a uh, circular uh, conduction weld, you've got a good uh, you know, uniformity as you go around the weld in whatever direction the linear speed is pointing in. And I think uh, coming to the end, one of the other things is, uh, is uh, from the battery packs is taking the outputs from all the cells together. So there may be uh, a number of uh, anode or cathode connections that, that all need joining together. And uh, this is what we're trying to show in this graph where uh, a stack of, uh, of um, copper foils have been welded together onto a, um, um, an aluminium, sorry, a stack of aluminium foils in this case have been welded together onto a, an aluminium base plate. Um, and you can see that uh, by controlling the, uh, the, the, the oscillation parameters, we're able to, to weld through all of them uh, and produce uh, a reasonably good interface into the, the final uh, base layer. And this is something which would be very difficult to do uh, conventionally to get that uh, depth um, and, uh, and, and still join into the bottom layer without actually destroying uh, a lot of the top foils. So this uh, application is really um, one where oscillation welding is is key to the whole whole process. So as we uh, come to the end of uh, the, the seminar, um, I just want to summarise uh, where we've gone with that. As we've we've looked at the welding uh, types of welding, we've looked at what oscillation welding is. Um, what are the key parameters that uh, cover oscillation welding? And then what are some of the results that we get in welding, uh, let's say, normal uh, metals like uh, stainless steel, but also in those more difficult to weld uh, metals, particularly as we've thought about uh, copper and, uh, and aluminium. Uh, just to, to highlight back, uh, the, the laser that we were using for, for the majority of this work was a Two kilowatt single mode laser, two kilowatts in a in a 19 inch uh, rack mounted unit. This one had uh, up to a 10 meter delivery fiber, single mode delivery fiber, a beam quality very close to the diffraction limited. But we can also use this with uh, with multi mode uh, delivery fibers as well if if needed, and we get um, really high speed modulation capability from the laser. So although generally for the oscillation welding, we have been using a CW output, if the, uh, if the laser is needed to uh, modulate it anyway in synchronization with the oscillation pattern, then it is possible to do that with these, uh, these lasers. Um, and as I said at the beginning, uh, the fiber delivery system that we use on these it has its own inherent uh, back reflection protection and is therefore very well suited for, for the welding of aluminium and copper uh, samples. Um, and we have what's called fiber view as a graphical user interface that allows uh, very straightforward and easy control of the laser software, whether using it for oscillation welding or for more traditional uh, welding applications. But uh, just finishing with a focus on uh, on oscillation welding, what does it bring into our uh, situation? So we tend to use the oscillation welding, generally uses a single mode, high power laser beam. Uh, we couple it to a scanning device of some sort, uh, and that is able um, on its own or in conjunction with, uh, with the work handling station to rapidly move the laser beam, um, both in this oscillation pattern and along the surface of the, uh, of the material. And by using the scanner and the laser parameters in combination, we're able to independently control the weld depth and the weld width, which gives us a really good um, results for a, a wide range of applications 
uh, and allows us to get into situations that with uh, just the standard fixed head welding would not be able to be achieved. So we, we like to uh, run the oscillation frequency quite high that keeps the weld pool moving and generally gives us better results. Um, and just a couple again to highlight uh, other areas of advantages for the oscillation welding. Uh, we've got this uh, much greater tolerance to uh, gaps and fit up than we would get from um, a normal situation in such that we can uh, use it to tackle welding uh, applications where uh, a normal uh, fixed magnification weld head just wouldn't be able to provide the, the range that's needed to, to cover the gap and still give you the power density you need for a good weld. And uh, because of this control over the, the weld pool, that we're, we're, we're running it around um, and, and allowing it to cool more slowly, then we can get much uh, less porosity and cracking in those materials, which tend to be sensitive to that. So uh, just in summary, the uh, Oscillation welding is relatively new technique compared to some of these other areas, and it's coming about because of the um, availability now of these high power single mode fiber lasers, you know, up to two kilowatts or so. Uh, it gives you really good uh, ability to weld in, uh, in a number of materials, uh, and it's looking like it's opening up a number of new application areas. So uh, thank you for your time and for attention uh, through this time. Uh, I hope it's been uh, somewhat useful and interesting to you. Um, if you knew about oscillation welding, maybe just shown you a few other things. If you uh, didn't know about it, perhaps it's, uh, it's just helped you to think, ah, oh, maybe that, that could be useful in some of my uh, uh, applications. Um, so uh, there's a time, a uh, few minutes, uh, maybe five or so minutes that we've got for some questions. Um, I can see that a few questions have uh, come in and uh, would uh, just, just very happy to, to answer those questions. I might not get to all the questions that, that people have sent in, but uh, we will be able to, to uh, pick those up and answer them. Uh, in detail personally if I don't manage to, to get your uh, um, to your question just now. Uh, so I've got uh, some questions here. Let's, let's have a quick look at uh, questions that people have been sending in. So just to say that uh, um, yeah I, I've used uh, I've used oscillation welding throughout, and someone asked, is, "Is that the same as uh, wobble welding?" Well, yeah, wobble welding and uh, oscillation welding are, are generally uh, the same the same thing. Um, it, oscillation welding, I think, is is just a, a phrase which translates better into other languages, uh, and so we we just uh, didn't use the wobble welding. It's also a little bit difficult if you have to keep uh, <laughs> if you have to keep saying it. Um, we will have this. Uh, we will have this uh, seminar. Will be available for download later on, so you will be able to, to come back to it and, and answer, uh, and find out the, the questions, uh, or, or just review it. So some of the, the questions I've had are um, some. Samples uh, used a uh, shield gas and other di others didn't. Why did you uh, use a shield gas in some cases and not others? Uh, so actually, the uh, as for fixed head uh, welding, the use of uh, shield gas is very uh, material dependent, and, and really it's the same for um, for, for oscillation welding. That, uh, as I said, for the stainless steel, you, you can weld it uh, without a shield gas, but uh, having a shield gas does, in fact, uh, give you a better cosmetic quality. So that's one of the reasons for the shield gas. Um, the other one is uh, when you get to some materials and uh, have a very high density, the, the plume that can be produced interferes with the, 
with the weld and so for it's, it's useful to have a shield gas to uh, to remove that um so really it's it's fact dependent on the uh, uh on the uh, on the material uh, and then we had some questions about um filler wire so do i do i actually really need filler wire with my uh um oscillation welding and um I'd say that that is again kind of related to the type of uh, alloys uh, being welded. Um, depends uh, on the uh, the alloys or what's in the alloy. Um, you can make some very good welds, uh, and, and as we saw, even with um, with gaps, that, that the, the the material can, can bridge the gap quite well with the oscillation welding. You don't always need a filler wire. If one of the components is a, tends to be a low vaporization uh, temperature, uh, then you might want to use a filler wire of some sort to uh, to feed back in and, and replace that. The other thing is uh, you, you can do that quite easily. Um, you know, you might need a, a filler wire a feed that is uh, of the sort that uh, maybe you you would use with a conventional welding technique uh, with a TIG weld or something. But uh, because you're, you're running around in different directions, it can be more difficult. So wherever possible, we don't like to use a filler wire, but uh, in some cases it was, it was necessary. Uh, so I've had uh, another question here is um, talking about is, uh, is just thin section lap welding uh, an application for this? And um, I think the answer to that is yes, that we've got um, the ability, because we have that ability to control uh, the, the weld profile, then we can use the, the, do the thin section welding uh, and get the width that we want uh, without necessarily having to go very deep. So we can do, as we were looking at the, on one of the last slides there where we were, a stack of foils was being produced together. It's possible to to um, to put the power in without totally destroying a thin layer, uh, which is uh, quite difficult to do usually. And uh, I think finally, just as we we're running out of time, uh, there were questions about: um, Do you have to use a single mode laser for oscillation welding? And uh, the answer to that is no. Um, the uh, it is possible to use an, another type of laser. We, we look, we've looked at, at uh, using a 50 micron fiber. Um, again, it has a slightly different profile, but uh, when you focus it down, um, it uh, gets down to a small enough spot size that the power density can be useful for some applications. Uh, and again, it's material dependent. So as I was showing in the presentation, uh, aluminium, for instance, um, uses a bigger, it works better with a slightly larger spot size, even in single mode. And we did that using a different uh, scan lens focal length. Um, but, but copper works very well with a small uh, spot size for, for the same laser power. So the lower power density on aluminium works better, gives a better cosmetic weld. And uh, for, for doing that, you could indeed use a, a larger diameter multi-mode fiber. Uh, part of the reason why we've concentrated most of the work on the single mode is just that it is the, the one that gives you the greatest flexibility because you can use, a num uh, use it for a number of different materials. The same laser, the same setup uh, can be used um, across a wide range of materials. And then you use the, uh, the scanner as the flexible programmable device to change the um, to change the the, uh, the the weld conditions. Okay, so uh, those are the questions. Now I'm sorry if I didn't get to all of the questions, but it's coming to the end of our time together. And as I say, we will uh, aim to to get back to those of you who did send in a question and uh, and answer it. If you um, do need any more information? Um, there will be uh, an email um, just coming round, I think, which will just ask for a bit of feedback on this uh, presentation, uh, but also has an opportunity for you to 
again, uh, contact us if you need more information. And as I said right at the beginning, one of the things that we, we do like to do is work with customers on, the, on applications using the, the know-how that we've got to help customers get off to an immediate start with their lasers. So if that's an area that you're moving into, um, either talk uh, directly to us here in the UK or in the local areas, you can see from that slide that we have a number of uh, centers around the world where uh, SBI staff will be very happy to, to talk to you. Uh, and uh, so just uh, finally, um, the last slide, just to say that uh, if you found this useful um, and helpful, um, and even if you haven't really, but there's a, an, another chance to hear from us uh, in September, just after the sort of summer break, we will be doing another uh, webinar, uh, this time talking about uh, Vary Mode, which is an exciting new uh, technique that we've got uh, being launched with our fiber lasers uh, just to bring an added degree of flexibility and productivity uh, from the fiber lasers. So uh, listen out for more information about that or, or register uh, just to get yourself uh, in touch there. But anyway, just uh, thank you for listening and uh, I hope it has been a useful time. And uh, yeah, I hope to hear from you again soon. Okay. Goodbye for now.